Culture Club, brought to you by Hanum. Hafidei, Guahu Silin Aplugui Arroyo. I am the daughter of Anthony Blas Aplugui and Darlene Duenas Manabusen. And I am a community advocate. I was born and raised in California, uh, Nelone Territory, which is also known as the Bay Area. And um, I am Chamorro, um, stateside born. I have worked in community advocacy for probably over 30 years now. Um, I think that my advocacy looks different or has looked different, you know, just depending on different moments in my life. But for the most part, um, I spend my time and I've, I've committed my time and energy um, to really focus on indigenous rights issues and bringing visibility to native Pacific Islanders here in the diaspora. And more specifically, making sure that Chamorro voices are also being represented. Um, and so I've worked with different, um, different student groups over, you know, over the last 30 years whether that's on university campuses, um, high schools, just to bring access to education. Um, and also I've worked around um, issues around climate justice and you know, protecting sacred sites. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I do live on Ohlone territory. So, you know, it's helped me to really understand um, other indigenous communities and what they're fighting for as well. And there's a lot of parallels to our histories. And so um, I've just found that, especially living here in the Bay Area and being around so many um, other indigenous communities that we really work collectively and support each other in our efforts um, for different you know, um, issues around social justice. I've also you know, helped, I helped to just organize different Pacific Island events um, in support of like Pacific Island arts or education. And I just really try to find ways to, to support our community. My community advocacy work started when I was really young. Um, as a child, I just remember uh, my Nina sending home, you know, bulks of Guam papers <laughs> to my family um, here in the States, just so that everyone can keep on top of what was going on back home on Guam. And I just remember you know, different conversations as, you know, when I was very young, um, my family members just talking about different things that were going on politically back home and just a lot of storytelling, you know, back and forth. And I just think I paid attention to all of those. And then moving forward, I think it really started or there was a fire that was sparked when I entered college. I, I um, attended UC Berkeley for my undergraduate studies and I was an ethnic studies major. And I think, you know, I just started to learn about histories of the most um, marginalized communities. And I really, I think for the first time saw myself um, in those histories. And I never had before, you know, growing up and, and taking history in high school was always, I actually hated history um, because I think I never just saw myself in that. But then when I was in college, you know, and I started to learn about a lot, of, uh, you know, primarily about a lot of black and brown communities, I really saw myself in there, in those histories and started to kind of connect the dots on, you know, the stories that I, I heard from my, from my family and knowing the history of Guam and our relationship with the United States. And then, you know, just my own experiences, I just, you know, started to kind of make those connections that there were so many injustices in the world and they were all connected. And I think it was really at that time in my life where I, you know, I wanted to do something about it and, and just, I wanted to just be more active and to trying to see, you know, where I might be able to, to fit in into making change. I think, you know, that I do this work and I spend a lot of time and I've committed a lifetime really to this is because it's it's part of who we are um, and it's and it's definitely our responsibility. So I I think that that's you know one of the main reasons why um, I work so hard to to try my best at least you know to to preserve that and especially you know I'm not obviously I'm not on island I live off island and I was raised out here and so whether you're 
living on island or off island, I still think we have the same responsibilities, you know, um, for that. And, um, and that we, you know, out here in the diaspora have also kept, you know, those, those values, those tomorrow values. I think for those that are working in activism and advocacy, it's really, the work is really rooted in love. And um, it's like this deep, unconditional love for something. And I think that that's where the, you know, where, where people get or folks get so passionate about a certain cause or, you know, fighting for something. It's because it's really coming, it's really rooted in, in, in their love for something. Um, and I say that because I think there's this stereotype that activists, you know, they're just full of hate, you know, and they want to just, you know, fight, fight, fight. And like, really that that's coming from a place of, of, um, of just of hate. And I, I've had those conversations before. And I think that, you know, for anyone that's doing the work, we know that that's not where it's coming from. It's really rooted in, in love and good intentions, you know, that, that our intentions are really, um, are nothing but positive for change because we want, you know, we want something to be better or that we care about something so much, you know, like we care about our culture, we care about our people, we care about our land, we care about our water. Um, I think like, you know, that's just all, all rooted in something very, and very special and, and rooted in love. Culture Club, brought to you by Hornemann.